All right, guys, welcome back to another Bitcoin video. CPI has just dropped. It came in at 6.5%. The market was expecting 6.5% and core inflation came in at 5.7% and the market was expecting 5.7%. So the market was correct about both claims. Both predictions there were correct from the market. And so we haven't really seen a dramatic amount of short-term volatility based on CPI. However, the main part of this video I want to talk about is the fact that Bitcoin is testing its major resistance level. This is a level of which if we break to the upside, we would actually confirm a trend reversal and we would partially confirm the bottom being in. So it's a very important time for Bitcoin. We saw a dramatic move to the upside in the last 24 hours, up from that 17K level to that 18K level. And now we're on the doorstep of 19K and breaking above that would again do a lot to confirm the bottom being in. So it's a very important time for Bitcoin with, you know, honestly, within within days, we could be seeing that break to the upside. We also could be seeing a rejection, of course. Uh, and, and so it is very important. We do need to look into that. So let's get into it in a second. Before we get into the video itself, we've got 48 hours remaining on the VIP sale. That's a 30% discount on all three month memberships on the VIP group. If you're interested in that, you can take advantage of it in the description or the pinned comment. We also have the Crypto Academy courses website. If you're interested in learning how to trade for yourself, learning how to do technical analysis, you can do so using that website and, and do check out all the details there. And then on top of that, if you're interested in signing up to an exchange that gives you the lowest fees possible in the game, Global Exchange, the BitGet Exchange is for you. Sign up to that using my referral link. Without further ado, let's get into the video, guys. So jumping straight into something like the four hour chart, which gives us a kind of shorter term view on Bitcoin and also relating it back to CPI, we can see the most recent four hourly candle, by the way, CPI literally came out 15 minutes ago the time I'm filming this. The most recent four hourly candle did see some volatility down to 1700, uh, sorry, 17,900, all the way up to 18,300. But ultimately that's only a candle uh, ranging in about a two to two to three percent range, two and a half percent range, which is nothing compared to other CPI releases again. I'll repeat myself, the reason why we didn't see a major move at CPI is because inflation came in at the expected number. The market priced in a 6.5% inflation rate. The inflation rate is in fact 6.5%. You only really see dramatic moves when there's a deviation between or a difference between what the market expects and the actual number. That's when you see the moves occur. For example, if that was to come in high, we would have seen a bearish move. If it was, if it was to come in lower than 6.5%, we would have seen a bullish move, but it came in the same, so it's neutral. Uh, and it kind of means the TA gets to play out the way it was expected to play out. Uh, and the thing with the Bitcoin TA right now, we'll jump back into the four hourly chart in a second, is that we're facing very, very, very major resistance. Now, this doesn't mean we can't break it. And in fact, I am expecting us to break it at some point. Um, you know, we've looked into many, many times, and I'm not going to repeat myself too much in this video because I've done it in the past a lot of times. We've looked into the four-year cycle. We've looked into the fact the four-year cycle kind of expects the bottom to be in at this point. We've looked into, uh, for example, the death cross on the DXY and how every time that daily chart death cross on the DXY occurs, we see a pump on Bitcoin. We just saw that a few days ago. We've looked into multiple things here. We've looked into, uh, you know, when Bitcoin's expected to get above 30K, which would be April 2023. And if we're going to get there, we're going to have to start moving pretty shortly, of course. We've looked into uh, Bitcoin's distance from the halving to the bottoms every single cycle. Uh, from halving to bottom every single cycle. In fact, I might have the chart somewhere. I don't at this point, but I'll just say that from halving to bottom every cycle, there is a period of around 500 days between that halving and the bottom on the previous two cycles. And if we were to have bottomed here in December, like we suspect we did, uh, sorry, in late November, like we suspect we did, there would have been 500 days between the bottom and the suspected halving in 2024. So there's so many things right now on Bitcoin, and I could, I could keep listing if I wanted to. So many things, I'll just say one more, why not? Uh, there's one on the uh, weekly chart RSI. We broke the weekly chart RSI to the upside. We've only ever done that in history once Bitcoin confirms the bottoming in. So I'll say there's multiple things right now you know, almost five or six things, very, very strong indicators that are, you know, tried, true and tested indicators that do suggest that the Bitcoin bottom is in. And so, yes, I am expecting Bitcoin to break above these confirmation zones at some point. The question is, when will we do that? And I was hoping CPI would shed some light in that situation, but unfortunately it didn't. 
um, and we're going to have to rely on TA. Now, I'm not buying Bitcoin right now. I've bought 50% at 17K. I did that uh, during the initial drop here in that October period there. And I've said multiple times to my audience, I'm not buying again until we see confirmation of a trend reversal. I think that confirmation of a trend reversal will occur when we break above an indicator that we topped out during a dead cap bounce in, which is the 200-day 200, 200 SMA. I don't know if that made sense, but essentially we saw a dead cap bounce, very strong dead cap bounce, in fact, in uh, January 2022 from 33K all the way up there to 48K. And we rejected from a 200-day SMA. That is hence a rejection point, which means in order to break the downwards trend and in order to break up to the upside in something that is more than a dead cap bounce in a tried and true way, we would need to break above a 200-day SMA. And so I think that in order for a trend reversal to occur, we need to be breaking the 200-day SMA, which is up here at 19.5K. So if we break that 200-day SMA, not only are we breaking the 200-day SMA, we're breaking the bull market support band, we're breaking this downtrending yellow line, we're breaking the red resistance box, we're breaking a lot of things to the upside as well. And yes, I do think breaking that green line there breaking that 200 day SMA would be a trend reversal. That's where I'll buy my other 50%. So again, just to reiterate, I do think that will happen at some point. I do probably think uh, at about a 75% likelihood at this point that the bottom is in on Bitcoin. I am of the opinion that the bottom is in on Bitcoin more likely than not. Um, and so it is a matter of when we break to the upside rather than if we do so. I want to briefly interrupt this video to talk about the BitGet exchange. The BitGet exchange has five times lower fees than Binance on futures. It has zero spot fees for spot trading, meaning you can trade spot for entirely free on every single coin. It has a reward center. It has a protection fund. It has events regularly run. For example, the FIFA World Cup event it ran recently was in partnership with Messi, the famous football player. There are many, many reasons to sign up using this exchange here. But if you sign up using my exclusive referral link, which you can find a, pin, a link to in the pinned comment description, you will get a further 50 percent decrease on futures fees and you'll get access to an exclusive reward center in which you can gain access to 4,000 USD in rewards via completing various tasks of various difficulties. Signing up to this exchange using my referral link is by far the best way you can support the channel and it's the best way you can support yourself as a trader gaining access to the cheapest exchange on the cryptocurrency market. Now, for my viewers from the United States of America, when you're signing up to the exchange, click on other as country of residence, as you can see I'm doing on the screen now, and you will be able to sign up and use the exchange normally as a non-KYC customer. You'll be treated exactly the same as everyone else in the exchange. So please sign up using my referral link. Thanks for watching the advertisement. Let's get back into the video. I will say the short-term charts aren't looking particularly great right now. Um, however, they weren't looking particularly great, great yesterday either, and we still pumped the upside, which is quite interesting. Yesterday, we were in this ascending wedge formation, um, and, and we just randomly broke to the upside, even though we had bearish divergence, and even though we had a hidden bearish divergence on the daily chart, which I can bring up right now. Uh, and also on the daily chart, we had descending volume, descending green volume, but all of that kind of just got ignored and we pumped to the upside. So I suppose... There is a likelihood we just do the same thing. We just ignore TA again and just break to the upside, I suppose so. Uh, but if I was to be honest with you, brutally honest, I would say, no, we're overextended here. We're at resistance, not only via the dot downtrending yellow line, not only by the bull market support band, but also by the, the red resistance box. And we're overbought on the RSI on the daily time frame and the four hourly time frame. So if I was to trust the TA here, I would say, yeah, Bitcoin looks good. Bitcoin looks good. We're going to break to the upside eventually. However, right now we're exhausted and we do need to come back down and retrace. And if I was to be brutally honest, where would we need to retrace to? I would say we need to retrace, at a, retrace to at a minimum, at a minimum, probably 17.1K. That's probably where I'd look at. And, and the reason why that is, because, why I think there is because we have that pink uptrending line from the channel and we have horizontal support there as well. Now, realistically, uh, again, we, we ignored TA yesterday. Can we do it again today? For sure, especially with the volatility CPI is bringing. Um, now, it hasn't brought much short-term volatility, but it certainly still is sifting into the market. It's only been 20 minutes since that release, so who knows what happens in the next hour or so. Uh, you know, I won't be able to cover that because I'm, I'm obviously making a video right now. But as of right now, I would say that, you know, the four-hourly chart, the daily chart, they're not looking particularly strong. Um, however, regardless of what they look like right now, I do think we'll see a breakout to the upside eventually. So that's quite interesting to note as well. Um, you know, we had a breakout on the total cryptocurrency market cap above that red resistance zone. However, we are still in a similar fashion to Bitcoin below resistance on the total cryptocurrency market cap. Ethereum is in a different situation here. Ethereum's actually skyrocketed to the upside. It's broken above bull market support band, broken above 200 ASMA, broken above its yellow downtrending line, which is stemming all the way back here from May. Ethereum is ahead of the market right now. And the reason being is because it had, it had actually an ascending triangle formation, unlike Bitcoin and unlike the total cryptocurrency market cap. So Ethereum has taken off a little bit here 
here, uh, and it's moved ahead of the markets, ahead of the ball here. Uh, and what's worth understanding about that is if we do see a correction, if we do see a rejection, Ethereum will be the one that gets hit the hardest. But if we do pump, Ethereum will be the one that pumps the hardest as well. So it's kind of a double-edged sword there for Ethereum. Will it be, not a double-edged sword, but it's, it's kind of like a... Um, uh, it's an extreme to to both ends. If it's bullish, it's going to be extremely bullish. If it's bearish, it's going to be extremely bearish. Um, so I, I will say as well, uh, the S&P 500 is something to be slightly concerned about. If we are going to see a rejection, this is probably the thing that will cause it. The S&P 500 is still rejecting from this downtrending line stemming from January 2022. Uh, in fact, CPI led to a retest of the top of that line, and now we're getting rejected from it quite strongly. Uh, so if we continue to reject there, I would expect Bitcoin to correct as, uh, reject and correct as well. So not really much unique insight I can offer you based on CPI. Unfortunately, I was expecting a little bit more to happen. Maybe some stuff will happen over the next day or so, but ultimately I, I will leave you with this. Bitcoin is testing very, very strong resistance. It's not looking particularly strong going into that resistance. However, I do think it will break to the upside eventually. And given the fact that we've seen multiple kind of, uh, multiple moves that go against the TA in the last few days, who knows, maybe it will even do it today. We'll see. We just have to watch the charts. Um, what I will say is that even if we break to the upside today, it's very unlikely we get above the 200-day SMA, 200 SMA, which is at 19.5K. So I wouldn't be worried about uh, staying up all night trying to get a buy or something like that. Because again, I'm not confident in buying Bitcoin unless we get that close above the 200-day 200 200 SMA. Uh, and that is quite a while away, Stuart. That's almost 10% away. So yeah, I wouldn't expect that to happen soon. Um, but we'll have to keep an eye on Bitcoin over the next couple of days. Maybe it will make a break above the yellow line. Maybe it will break into the bull market support band. Let's wait and see. It'll be extremely bullish if it does. If we're looking uh, to, you know, what we really want to be seeing on Bitcoin here in the short term, actually, in order for that bullish momentum to, to maintain and keep up, is a daily candle close above the yellow line. Uh, if we do that, we have the opportunity to see a correction, which is much needed. But instead of correcting downwards towards 17.1K, we could actually see that correction occur downwards towards the yellow line, flip that yellow line along with the red box, turn those both into support, and then head up to the upside. That way we would see that correction, we would move back, regain our ground, and we would do it in a very, very bullish format, which would lead to a trend reversal in a very strong way. That's what we want to be seeing. Um, and whether that happens or not is a different question, but that's what we want to be seeing on Bitcoin. So definitely a few things to keep an eye out, guys. I appreciate you watching the video. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.